Good morning, guys. Yes. We're live. It's, so, it's even harder to say GM because you never know. I have some people. We definitely have some people in our community. They're in India. They're in Australia. They're in Asia. Like, they're excited to do this and yelling at me <laughs> that they need to go to bed at the same time. But this is great. Perfect. Let's let a few more start to filter in. I'll give some context. Okay, well, just to even kick us off, for those that know me, Extra Guac, or aka Ashley Vickers, one of the co-founders of Our Planet, you probably hear me talk a lot. Um, so looking forward to a space where I am not the one doing all of the talking. It's so great. And you have Final Sites, who heads up our community building team on Discord. Um, really excited to, to, to feature this as the first event of our Learn Good Shit Week. And you know, really a lot of this was set on, uh, you know, the, the foundation that people just need more resources and tools. I think all of us, even if you're a novice, you're new to this space, or you've been here for a long time and you really have some things figured out, I think we can always evolve our thinking, enhance this and be more well-rounded or, you know, offer some additional support and tools uh, to, to new folks in the space. And so that's always been one of our core missions, you know, here is enhancing the experience for our community members and others. Hence why we have made this one open to all members. It's a you know pillar of our planet that we want more to know what we have access to. And the program that I think we were able to pull together is pretty phenomenal with some of these speakers and still adding to it. So a couple more alerts you'll, you'll see here today. Um, but you know, when you have things like minting days, you, you very quickly see how you know, there's bad actors in the space, there's scammers, there's people that maybe are influenced to tell you to purchase an NFT and it's not always disclosed the, the benefits that they might be receiving to do so. And so really important to us that we highlight groups like Alpha Traders Country Club who not only, you know, look at this from a VC investment angle, but a research angle, a real due diligence angle, and then they put their money where their mouth is. Um, it's not about making recommendations that they inherently are gifted NFTs on the back end. And so um, I come from a finance background, really resonated with meeting with this team and learning more about what they do. We got to nerd out for at least an hour on just how we analyze these things as investment products and tools. And, you know, you're really dealing with real money um, and that matters. So, you know, you don't want to chase good money after bad, things like that. So really excited to feature uh, this group as the first one. I will pause there and turn this over to uh, Alpha Traders Country Club. Thanks so much, Ashley. That was amazing. And, and we're all really happy to be here and talk with the Our Planet community. It looks like you guys have got something going on that's really special as well. So Ashley, I'm here. I'm so sorry, I was just going to say, Ashley, I think you were born to intro spaces and, and events. <laughs> <laughs> Toastmasters, my Toastmasters yeah. class. Yeah, that was uh, that was impressive. I was I had my little notepad out. I was like, damn, I need to take some notes here. This is impressive. Oh, thank you, thank you. I've had I've had a couple cups of coffee, so I'm raring to go. Oh, one one last <laughs> note just for everyone before we get started. Um, there are po apps associated with each one of these events that we are hosting. We are also recording, but please download the po app app. Uh, I will be releasing uh, a secret phrase throughout this um, that then you can use. It will follow immediately post the event. So you will need to go log on and get this done quickly before it expires. I am working with the POAP team. It's not inherent, you know, that they want these recorded and uh, listed for a long period of time, but called in a couple of favors that we should be able to manually um, add people that have, unfortunately they have to sleep um, and they have real jobs and other things like that, that they need to get to. So we will look to manually add people that have been and had a chance to listen. So don't worry, we got you. Haven't forgotten about you. We'll make sure that you have access to this. So uh, download the app while you're listening, please, if you don't already have access to it. Um, perfect. And then uh, we'll, we will use the event chat over on the left hand side of your menu. So if you have uh, questions for Gen Alpha or for Tyler, uh, please do not hesitate to drop it in there and then we will post some questions here at the end. Perfect guys, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, before I have Tyler introduce us and who we are, I just wanna give a brief overview of like what you kind of expect from this, uh, what do we call it, stage event. Um, we want to people to walk away with a better mindset 
of how you invest in the NFT space and how you manage your money and your capital to where we're taking a lot of the degen negative behaviors and making that and funneling that towards becoming a more profitable and and a, and a, a, a more intelligent investor in the Web3 space. And so that's the, the, it's all about mindset for us. And this is what we're going to dig into for the next 45 minutes or so. And hopefully we can get some, uh, some Q&A as well at the end. Tyler, you want to uh, introduce ourselves? For sure, for sure. Um, one of the things that uh, as we, as I begin to introduce this, uh, one of the things that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to put some uh, images and some graphics uh, into this event chat. Uh, that you guys see now at the start here they are just pretty pictures of myself and martin um, so they are not that valuable um, but as we get through uh, our talk uh, today these uh, graphics are going to become more and more valuable uh, and as martin said we're looking for you guys to walk away today with actionable things to to change your trading and investing and uh, some of these graphics that we're going to be sharing are, are things that you know we have our members printing out uh, and actually using um, day to day, like checklists, um, you know, when they're going to trades and things like that. So, um, but starting on starting on the first one, um, you know, there, there's there's we we can't be up here giving a talk if you guys don't know who we are uh, and why you know what qualifies us to be here. So my name is Tyler Jordan. Uh, I am from Australia, as I'm sure many of you have probably guessed. Um, you know, I've been full-time uh, trading stocks and crypto for the last couple of years uh, in the United States. Uh, I currently live in Austin, Texas. And uh, before uh, getting into Web3, uh, I was co-running uh, an eight-figure civil construction company uh, for about six to eight years back home uh, in Australia. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of my quick little backstory. Um, I've met Martin at a truetrader.net event. Uh, in uh, Georgia, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and TrueTrader.net is a uh, an educa a stock trading education company, and that is kind of how me and Martin met, and they actually ended up coming on board and being a founding partner of Alpha Traders. Now they are strictly stocks, um, and you know that's where kind of we got our start, and that's where we've started developing this mindset uh, and these trading strategies uh, and analogies that we're going to be bringing forth today. Martin, did you want to give a quick little recap of yourself? Thank you. My name is Martin Papp. I am located in Southern California, but I actually started my uh, career in China after I graduated from university. I lived in um, Beijing and Shanghai for about 10 years. I started a tea company uh, with my uh, wife when we were there it is a company that imported foreign teas like teas from india sri lanka um herbal teas uh like rooibos from south africa into china so we were actually introducing a lot of western uh nice kind of tea consumption to the chinese community uh there i received venture capital funding uh we went through an accelerator program an incubator program uh, all the way up to a round funding. Uh, I'm still running that remotely. Uh, ever since the pandemic, it kind of sidetracked my my career path a little bit. It was made it really difficult to be traveling back and forth uh, between China and other countries. So I've settled down in Southern California. I have a five year old son now, uh, and or six now. Just turned six yesterday, and since 2020, uh, I've been uh, working from home as a full-time uh, trader. And that's where I met Tyler from in truetrader.net. So we became super invested in trading stocks, uh, day trading in the morning market opens, as well as swing trading. And then that naturally evolved over time to be really interested in uh, crypto and in NFTs. And we thought, what would be better than to create a club that's specifically focused on the trading uh, aspect on the crypto space through an NFT membership. And that's what Alpha Traders Country Club um, kind of originated from. And I'm gonna, we're going to get to this in a little bit, but what's interesting is that I came into the space with the mindset of being a trader 
and flipping NFTs. And I quickly realized um, that's actually not what I want to be in this space. Um, that's actually not what the NFT space reminds me of. It reminds me of, this is what I actually alluded to, of when I was doing a startup business and getting venture capital funding and really being in the venture capital world. That's what the NFT space is to me. And we're going to dive into that in a moment. Um, in terms of club, uh, we'd love to introduce it real briefly. We uh, I actually have a little official intro here. Alpha Traders Country Club, known as ATCC, is a company that invests in startup businesses, stocks, cryptos, and NFTs. Our NFT holders uh, is a PFP collection of sloths, and they receive rewards every six months backed by the profits we make from the investments with our company treasury. Our vision is for each and every one of our members to be financially independent, making money for themselves and for the club. So whether that's through trading, uh, investing, uh, in NFTs or starting your own business that we invest in for you. Um, all of these things are things that we try to help our members succeed in. Um, if you found it difficult to grow your account in the last several months, you know, we're in the middle of a bear market right now. Um, we can help change that. You know, our company treasury from June 1st to September 1st actually grew by 12%. Uh, we've outperformed ETH by 26% and Bitcoin by 44%. So if you're looking for a, uh, a community that's really focused on making smart investments in this space, uh, we send out alerts, we let people know what are we investing in as a company. And that's something that if you're interested in, please come and spend some more time with us. We're also starting to now invest in real estate. So we're building a clubhouse in Costa Rica that's going to be not in the metaverse. This is a real clubhouse where you can come and visit and we'll have trading classes, investment classes, and we also have plans to start up an incubator program there for entrepreneurs. So without further ado, um, you know, when you get a chance, uh, come, come, you know, check out our collection on OpenSea. It's right now around 0.6 ETH. That's, you know, five times more than what it was when we minted six months ago. Uh, but uh, let's, uh, let's get into this. Uh, am I missing anything, Tyler, before we continue into what it means to be an intelligent investor? Absolutely. Not. I feel like you hit all of the uh, all the points there. So let's uh, let's let's get straight into it. Awesome. Uh, quickly post this. So when myself and Martin started this company, um, as Martin said, we came in to flip NFTs and, and realized that the space was uh, much more than what we thought. And what it um, did for us was, again, as Martin mentioned, it reminded us of venture capitalism and we view this space um, as basically a VC's marketplace where, you know, everyone has an idea, they pitch it and they try and build it out to a bunch of investors who want to be involved on the ground floor, uh, which is just that slide that I just posted in the uh, event chat. And what that is, is it, is it essentially makes investors VCs. Uh, and we believe that, that everybody is a VC. Some people just have a different amount of money. Now, when we started this company um, back in December, January um, of 2021, 2022, there weren't very many uh, legitimate companies. So it was more or less a VC marketplace of um, PFP collections with absolutely zero value, zero substance, undoxed, completely undoxed um, team. And it was just running on a hype train. And we started our company based on trying to, um, you know, siphon through and find the legitimate companies that are, that are building, you know, businesses within this space. And that's kind of how we have branded ourselves and, and how we've become, you know, Alpha Traders Country Club. So elaborate on that, Martin? Yeah, I'll go, I'll just go a little bit um, more in depth on this concept of what is an NFT. And... We keep saying venture capital, venture capital, but I mean, think about the basic building blocks of this. When you're investing in an NFT collection, what are you actually investing in? Like, what are you actually buying? Are you buying a JPEG? Are you buying a piece of code? I don't think that's really the reason that anybody buys this, the, these, these items. The value comes from what are the founding team 
a group of people have decided to create a vision and to execute on that vision. That's what you're buying into. That is no different than investing in an, as an angel investor or a venture capitalist or early seed round funding of a group of people that have this great idea, this vision, something they want to do for the community, something they want to do where it's a product or a service or a club. And you're investing in that. And so what we always, so, th- so my mind quickly flipped and I realized that, hey, like, this is way different than investing in stocks. Because when I invest in stocks, we're, one, you're investing in companies that are way mature. These are companies that have multi-million dollar market caps that have already gone through all the rounds of funding you can imagine, and now they're out to the public. They are well-established businesses, and you have an, um, an extraordinary large amount of tools. Um, well, before I get to that, you also have an extraordinary large amount of distance between you and the founders. They don't know you. You don't know them. And so that's where the kind of the dis um disenchanted you know version of flipping comes into play is that i don't care what happens to meta or to netflix in the next couple days all i care about is just making money on the price movement and that's what trading is do you want to go to that next slide because this is kind of what i'm getting into um and so with trading all we're caring about is the price movement and i'm not really attached to the company itself now, I think when I got into the NFT space, that was the originally the idea. It's like, I want to make some money. I want to do some flipping. But I also, two things happened to me. One, I realized, wow, the trading tools and the, the amount of tools that I have access to to responsibly trade is not comparable at all. The stock market has had years and years of development to give you the tools necessary to read the volume, to read um, uh, the, the indicators, to be able to set your stop orders, your limit orders, your, your buy and sell orders, waiting and sitting with, you know, where you can really manage that risk. You can't do that in the NFT space currently. And so it was way high risk. Like I was able, I'm, I'm able to be profitable in the stock market, but I got my ass whooped trading NFTs because it was just like, how can you, how can you really responsibly trade in this space when, when you don't have the amount of tools that you need at your disposal to execute as responsibly as you'd like to? That was the first problem. And then the second problem goes back to where I just described that I realized that this isn't like investing in big companies. We're investing in, in some very early stage businesses where you actually get to know the entrepreneurs. They are bringing you on to the team. When you become a part of our planet or a part of ATCC, you are now a contributing member. And as a venture, and this is why I like the venture capitalist mindset, is that you're not just investing your money, you're investing in becoming an advocate, a strategic partner. You are helping these founders achieve their mission by what you do in the community, what you can contribute. You know, and so I see people sometimes get upset about the floor price you know, going up and down. And, and, and my, my question always to them is, well, what can you do to help that floor price? This, is, this isn't just you investing your money into a company. This is you being a part of the company. And, I, and, and once that kind of clicked for me and I realized that, wow, community is everything. When I'm coming in here, I can actually make a difference. That's when we become investors and specifically early stage investors. And so that's what we have on the slide here. If you looked, is that we, we really try to differentiate trading versus investing. When I trade the stock market, I'm looking for price movement. When I, when I buy an NFT, I'm investing. And when you do early stage investing, you also know that it takes time. It's a long-term endeavor. None of the visions or plans can be executed of any company instantly. It takes years. But the kicker is the return on investment is night and day. People are talking about investing in the markets, getting, you know, a 5%, 10% gains. We're talking about how do you get a 20x, 
30x, 100x return. And that takes, that's what the early stage investor needs to be thinking about. And that's why you can't get preoccupied with what the price movement is doing from this week to the next week. You've got to be thinking, where is this going to be in three to five years? I've, uh, I am, I am just flying here, Tyler. Is there anything that you want to uh, <laughs> jump in at any time, please? No, no, it's good. It's good. I, I, when when we get when we get passionate about things, we we seem to we seem to go. Um, but no, I just wanted to touch on the time frame uh, here, and and time frame really is the difference between trading uh, and investing. Now, one of the things that um, is very evident in in the NFT space is that. When you're trading PFPs and you're trading hype-based projects, you're, the, the, the people that are losing out on those trades are the people that are trying to invest in those projects. And they're trying to invest in them where the, 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 the company that they're investing in does not have a five-year plan, a 10-year plan. They don't have any value propositions. All they have is the, the, the hype, um, or that is at least their biggest and main component. Whereas people who are in and out within a matter of, you know, an hour, two hours, maybe a day or two at most, they're the people who are, you know, although very, very rare, those are the people who are able to win. And that's kind of what we're, what we're looking for in, in the VC mindset is we're coming into a project or a company and we're saying, what do they have in place to be around in three years, five years, 15 years, 25 years? How are they going to, to sustain the company, you know, without the, the, you know, the stereotypical hype that you see, you know, what um, revenue streams do they have? How are the founders being compensated, you know, sustainably so that they can continue to, to run this company, um, you know, over the next, you know, couple of decades, all these different factors are going into our investment and, you know, when you're looking at making an investment into a company and you're looking at 10, 20 years in the future, you're not worried about what the, the hype is doing at this current minute or getting in within the next hour or the next day. You know, you're doing your due diligence and you know that once you get in, you're essentially a part of that company and you're going to be, you know, on, on board with it. And as Martin said about being an active investor, it's actually one of our, one of our biggest pushes. It's like, you know, once we, as a company, um, you know, as, as we said at the start, we have a treasury and we don't just make calls. We're letting you guys know what we're investing into and why. And you guys will notice that once we start investing into certain companies, we don't just sit there and, and watch things go, you know, we're investing into them and then we're pushing them in every way that we possibly can, whether it's through promotion whether it's through feedback whether it's through telling all of our you know friends and family and community or you know whatever it might be you know we're, we're really trying to grow that company because you know as that company grows we grow um, as a default and that's really the big mindset shift here is that when you're quote-unquote degening in the nft space you don't care about the company you're caring about your next hundred dollars or 0.2 ETH or whatever it might be. Whereas when you're looking at this space through a VC's mindset, you're attaching yourself and you're looking for huge growth and, and growing with the company. Yep. Let me, uh, let me explain real quick why we look for huge growth and why the hundred X investment is so important. And this kind of goes to something that, um, Marilla San, Marilla San or Marilla San mentioned and said, you know, as an angel investor, can you get rugged too? And that's something that you have to consider when you're investing not only in Web3 space, but as any investor in early stage business, you understand this is super high risk. And the way that venture capital firms work is that they know nine out of 10 startup businesses will fail. Now, in the Web3 space, we'll say, oh, it's a rug or a slow rug. And you even have the malicious rugs. But most of these startup businesses, ventures, are going to fail. Therefore, you cannot allow the one that's going to win to only make 10% or 20% gains. 
you have to invest with the mindset that you have to at least 10x or 20x just to cover, just to, just to break even. Now, where you can really knock it out of the park is if you get good at making your selections and investing in a few really good winners, you know, then you can 100x, 200x, and you make huge gains. But that is why I think trying to do the flipping and the trading and, and buying and selling off of movement of, you know, 20, 30% up and down is really risky in this space because this isn't, as we said, large companies, multi, multi-billion, multi-million caps that have long track records. We have investments, even ourselves, that have gone to zero, essentially. But that is part of the game in this space. And if you manage your money properly, and if you go in there with the right expectations, the right goals, there is huge gains to be made two, three, five years out. And that's really what we hope that you guys come away with this is that making not not just not just saying okay i understand that you can make money at the vcs but i still like flipping we're trying to make the argument that if you're going to want to trade go into the nft and crypto space i'm sorry go into the the stock and the crypto space and trade because the tools there to trade are much more effective and when you're dealing with nfts we realize that you're engaged with founders you're engaged with people do what helps them. And what helps them is by being longtime supporters. And in the end, that will give you far bigger gains than anything you could do flipping. And, and personally, I, I, I don't have data on this, but I believe that most people that try to do a career of flipping NFTs uh, have some pretty ugly P&Ls. I just, I don't think it's a very profitable path for you. I think you're basically gambling at that point. Now you, you touched on one point, uh, about a, a 30 seconds to a minute back, Martin, that, that actually leads us into our next point. Um, and it is the, the goals of what you're investing into, um, and why, um, and this also goes for, for trading as well. And it's one thing that, you know, I can see there's probably 10 to 15 um listeners in this uh stage right now who are alpha traders members and they're probably going to block their ears because they're sick and tired of me and martin preaching this so much but it's about having a plan right when when we're buying in or investing into any company we have a plan we know why we're investing we know where we're investing like the price we're getting in we know where our exits are if there are any we know why we're exiting we know what our risk is we have a full detailed plan when we're looking for investments now one of the things that that we deal with a lot is we we do a lot of one to one sort of coaching and um you know voice channel uh, help with a lot of our members and we have a lot of members who jump in and they've got 50 NFTs in their wallet that are, that are all down. And when you ask them why they bought it, they, they can't tell you anything other than everyone else was buying it. And it's something that we preach a lot is that if you're going to be putting your hard earned money into something, you need to know why you're putting it into it. If you're looking to buy a piece of one-to-one -one art, that is phenomenal and all the power to you. I don't know that I appreciate art yet for what it for what it really is, um, but I'm sure that I will get there one day. But you know, if you're buying the art for the art, then then buy it for the art. You know, if the floor price of that collection drops by 0 0.01 of an ETH, don't get upset and then sell out. If your original plan was I'm buying this because I like the art. And that's solely what I want to do. And I want to get a TV put up on my wall and have that, you know, plastered on my, on my home wall. You know, you need to rem put your plan down and, and remember why. And it also is, is um, it translates to, to every kind of investment. If you're investing in a tool, there's something that helps you trade or something that is like, you know, maybe like a wallet tracker or some sort of an analytics tool, whatever it might be. And you're buying in, at a certain price because you want to use that tool, then you know you should be buying in for that reason. There isn't any reason to be selling out of it because you've 
you know, the floor price has dropped by a tiny little piece or like the other way, if the floor price has gone up, you know, it, it's not any reason to be, to be getting, to be getting out because you're buying in because you want the tool, not because you want the floor price gains. Now that then translates over again to if you're wanting to invest in this space in a monetary aspect, which me and Martin have gone over where, you know, if you are looking to get in based on monetary rewards and, and financial gain, you know, then you need to have those stops in place and you need to know that, you know, once a floor hits, you know, X, Y, and Z, you're going to be getting out or, you know, taking some off the table, um, you know, for, for X reason. But you need to create a plan and you need to know what your goals are around why you're investing into something. Yeah, the, yeah. the key here that I'll just emphasize is that we're not blindly saying hodl and never sell. We're not a meme stock saying go buy, you know, AMC or GameStop and just never sell and then get crushed. What we're saying is have a plan. And if your plan is to make gains, then do a visualization of where are you going to make those gains? At what point will you sell? And so even for our NFT collection, you know, we've talked with our members about this, even, you know, pre-Mint when they had to fill out the whitelist form. We ask them, you know, what are you going to do if our floor price goes down 50%? What are you going to do if our floor price goes up 100%? Now, your answer, whatever you want to do, is totally fine. All we're asking is that have you created and visualize what you will do in those moments so you make good decisions for yourself and you're not doing anything too emotional. And so I've even laid out a plan for everybody that I want you to scale out and sell our NFTs as we grow. So I recommend buying, say, four NFTs minimum so you can sparse it out. One, once you quadruple your investment, sell one of them. Now you're break even. Everything else after that point is profit. And then I set my next NFT at 10x, my next NFT at 50x, and, the, and, the, and then the final NFT I never sell because I always want to be part, part owner of this group or part member. So the, 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 your plan can be different, and that's fine. But that's what we really want to stress is that when you get into investing, whether, whether it's trading or long-term investing as a venture capitalist, doesn't matter, have a plan. Make sure your expectations are clear. And this is where it gets really difficult for people in the NFT spaces because in some ways, uh, a, lot of the, 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 a lot of the NFT space is, is built to play on your emotions and confuse you. Are you buying art? Are you buying hype? Are you buying a long-term investment? Are you buying something where the floor will double in 24 hours and you can sell? And you have to be able to compartmentalize those and, and say, why am I investing in this? Let's be clear. If I'm investing because I'm looking to gamble or I'm looking to, to try to drive, ride some hype, that's fine, but be clear about it. And then don't get disenfranchised when it doesn't work out and you start fighting the team. Like that's, that is completely you not understanding what you are investing in and what you're trying to get out of it. And if, and then likewise, if your plan is that you really like what our planet is doing, you really like what this other NFT collection is, their mission is, and you want to support them, then don't worry about the floor price. Then don't worry about the day-to-day -day activities. Look at, look at the long-term building. And so this is where the plan before you invest becomes so crucial. Setting your goals. Why are you investing in this? Always ask yourself, why am I investing in this and what is my plan? If you don't have those things in place, I mean, you're, you're, you're essentially opening yourself up to the whims of emotion and any given day you might be in a bad mood or something is going wrong and, and you make a bad decision, you sell when you shouldn't have, or you, or you don't sell when you should have. Let's move on to the next slide. Uh, we want to kind of start taking this more towards... Uh, kind of a checklist and, and of things that we look for. Now that you know that what we like to invest in 
and what is important to us. This is, we just posted it in the event chat. It is our Alpha Traders Venture Capital Checklist. And this is not the all in be all, but this is some guidelines. And these are things that we look for uh, when we are doing our due diligence on different projects. Do you want to, uh, you want to run through them? Yeah, of course. Um, so, I mean, th these all are pretty much what we've already gone over. Um, it's just broken down into a, into a checklist. And one of the things that we encourage uh, all of our members to do is to have this printed out um, and, and actually go through this when making investments. Uh, this checklist, I personally have dealt with uh, many, many of people who have come to us in desperation or in a freak out mode with an investment or whatever it might be about an NFT. And then I've pulled this checklist up and said, let's go through this together. And it only takes maybe getting to the second, third or fourth point. And they're like, I actually don't know why I'm investing in this. I'm just caught up in the, I'm caught up in the emotions. And as Martin said, you know, this, this game and this space is built to play on your emotions. And this checklist is doing the opposite of that, where we're actually trying to remove your emotions, look at things logically and being able to build a plan logically rather than emotionally. So the first one here, uh, which our planet is uh, doing extremely well, is other team docs and personally committed to this. And, and that for us is potentially our biggest piece. You know, everything that, that, that we're invested in, uh, that, that, that doxed and, you know, they are, um, you know, we speak to founders on personal Zoom calls. Um, sorry, just quickly, it replying to a message from Eternal Phoenix. We are not doing live due diligence right now. Um, but, you know, we, we get on calls with, on Zoom calls with founders um, and we also dig in quite deeply to their background. And it's quite funny, we get on a lot of calls with founders and we start talking to them about their personal lives and they always give, you know, a bit of a raised eyebrow. And we ask them about what their hobbies are and their family and their revenue streams and all these, you know, you know, personal questions. And it's not because we want to, you know, dig into their personal life. It's because you can't run a company if you're personally not involved in it mentally. It, it, and what I mean by that is, you know, if they, I'm going to give you an example. We, we got on a call with a founder and everything was incredible. We got all the way through. It was about a 40 minute um, interview or, or, you know, call. And myself and Martin were looking at each other going, wow, this is, this is really great. You know, we can see some huge benefits to this. We're going to invest. We've got our treasury ready. You know, we're really looking to go in on this. And at the end, we spoke about, uh, this founder's 10 year plan and, you know, what his hobbies are and things like that. And he said, well, what I really want to do is I want to become a dentist. That's my ultimate goal. And for us, we were like, well, how, hold on a minute. We're looking currently at your software company within web three, but you really want to be a dentist. So we know that we can put money in and yes, your company might do great, but ultimately in five to 10 years, you don't want to be here, which means that my investment into this company is gone more than likely within five to 10 years. And, and for us, that's a, that's a huge piece. So we dig in and we really encourage everyone that we can to dig into, you know, the, your founders lives, you know, don't, invade their privacy too much but what you're looking for is passion and something that i always say is you can fake whatever you want but you cannot fake passion you can't you you, you really can't and i'm sure that you know ashley comes up here and you listen to her speak and you are you are in, in thrilled with what she's saying because she's so encapsulating just like i was when she was speaking Versus you go onto a Twitter space and you listen to some other founders who are in this for the money and you can tell. And you can tell after their third or their fourth word. You know, they're speaking and they're like, yeah, and this and that and this and that. And they're, they're not in it. And that's something that, that we're looking for. Sorry, I'm rambling a little bit here. 
Martin, do you want to do the second one? Yeah, I want to talk about, yeah. What is, the second item here is what is the history experience of the team that qualifies them to carry this company to success? This is a huge one. Um, because remember when we are investing, usually there's no product yet. There is usually just a plan to create something. Who is going to execute that plan is of the highest importance because lots of people can have great ideas. Ideas are many, and there's a lot of good ones. The real question is, are you the person to realize this idea? Are you the person that can execute and make this plan a reality? That's the really secret sauce that's so hard. And that's where the due diligence of getting into the background. Do they have the qualifications to do the things that they're saying? Experience matters. You know, I hate being prejudiced against young people, having been a young entrepreneur myself, but it makes a difference when you've got five, six years of doing something, and then you're going to go and build a business based off of that experience. It's huge. The other component to that is, and this is something that uh, Tyler mentioned, but do they have the income and the financial stability to sustain themselves during this endeavor as well? You know, a lot of people can have great ideas, but if they don't, if they can't make it happen in three months, they're going to have to go and do something different because they don't have the capital to sustain themselves. That's also things you got to be thinking about. Are you in a position where if the mint doesn't go well, or if it doesn't take off as fast as you thought that you're still able to continue and execute this plan? So this is where everything revolves around getting to know the founders, figuring out who they are, what their experience is, how committed are they? Will they be sticking around during the hard times? Because there will be hard times. Not everything is always just up and up and up. It's not. And those are the things that we place at the highest importance every time we make an investment, every time. More so than the product, more so than, not to say those other things are important, but it always goes back to what am I really investing in? Am I investing in a JPEG? Am I investing in a pass? No, you're investing in a person or a team. That's it. Don't forget that. Let's move on. Fourth bullet, is there a need or demand for the product service being provided? So this is now we're getting into secondary importance, still high importance, but just underneath how important the founders are, the next step is, is this product or service something that really has a market? Do you have any examples of this, Tyler? Uh, I was, I was just trying to unmute myself. I was, I was put posting something and I was like, oh, I need to get myself unmuted. Um, yeah, I, I mean, most examples of, of this are almost 95% of every NFT project that's launched. Um, you know, when they're, you know, Bored Ape Yacht Club, and I know that they're the most overused example in the world, but they're the best example because when they launch, they're, they're an, an incredible company and, and they very quickly established themselves as the ape project the blue chip project how many derivatives of apes have we seen since then and how many of them have become as successful absolutely zero and that's because the demand was there for, for some reason the demand was there for apes the demand was met and they took they took that demand there is no more demand left for ape projects okay now that that also translates into real world business as well is like you know, there, there may not be a major demand right now for NFT cleaning services, so, you know, within this space. Or, you know, there, there isn't a need right now for PFP projects. And it kind of goes back to the, the legitimacy of, you know, something being a company versus a project. I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit stumped for words. <laughs> On on that one, but I I I, th I think you are you, you get the point there. Um, 
fifth, do you want to add anything to that before we go to the fifth one, Martin? Well, I know that we're getting a little shorter in time and we want to leave uh, some room for some of our final thoughts and then any, answer any questions. So feel free to, to, to go through this checklist. You, you now have it in the chat, guys. But this is something that we are always going to be assessing every time. And the biggest thing that I'll just leave you with in terms of when you're doing your due diligence is take your time. Don't let the announcements or the time frames put pressure onto you where you rush through any of this. Take your time when you're making decisions because there, if it's a good NFT venture, it's going to be around for years. You're always going to have time to get into it when you're ready. Okay, so, I'm going to post the, the next slide, and which is our final slide. It's coming. Leave a cue. What was that? Um, well, we just have a few questions here. I guess we can a ask answer them afterwards. Uh, yeah, let's. This is this is our final slide, guys. So what we'll do, um, and we still have about twelve minutes left. So we'll we'll, we'll go over the slide, uh, and then we will uh, jump back through the um, back through the questions here and, and get into that. But how how do you begin? And and that's the biggest question that um, you know we we get asked when people come in. And the the biggest thing that you want to focus on is making sure you're in the right mental state. Uh, to trade and or invest and that you're doing so logically and not emotionally. Now, the biggest, by far the biggest uh, hurdle and the biggest barrier that we see that, you know, that makes people trade emotionally versus logically is that they're usually holding tons and tons and tons of NFTs that are worthless. Now, something that it unconsciously does is it is it weighs you down mentally and you start making decisions to try and make your money back or trying for the next moon what is a incredibly powerful uh activity to do or task to do is go and get rid of your valueless nfts all the ones that don't mean anything you know the ones that realistically are going to go to zero the ones that don't you know pass the checklist and and the ones that that aren't bringing you any value in your day-to-day -day life getting rid of those you'll be able to start with a clean slate which means you will be able to start with a fresh mind and a logical mind rather than an emotional mind it's very much the same as relationships um, and business and, and anything along those lines now the next one once you have a clean slate you want to research, 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 research. And then when you're done researching, do a little bit more research. Now, what is research? Go back to that checklist again and go through that checklist. The more information that you can get based on those questions that we asked in that checklist, the more knowledgeable and uh, competent you will be to make an intelligent decision on this investment. Most of your research is in that checklist. There isn't too much that's out of that that will, you know, play a huge factor in your investment. Make a plan. This is the be all and end all of every single thing that happens in this space. This is the difference between somebody that is profitable and somebody who is losing everything they've got. I saw one of the members in here, James, mentioned before that he is quite a profitable trader. Now, I'm just going to take his word for it. And if that is the case, it's most likely due to that he has a plan. And we've already gone over this at the start, of the, at the start but make one. If you, you know, research, what, what are your goals? Why are you buying into this? And then once you've figured out why you're buying into it, then figure out where you're going to exit. Um, you know, as Martin said before, what happens if you mint it and the price goes down 50%? What if it goes up 50%? What if, you know, the, what if something happens in the company that you don't like? Or, you know, what happens if X, Y, and Z? Make a plan whilst you're in a logical state of mind, because once you have that asset, you automatically are putting yourself in an emotional state, adding in things like hype. Um, you know, and 
just, just like good news or bad news, those are things that are just adding to your emotional state. And we all know that feeling. We buy an NFT, it doubles, it triples, it quadruples. And when we bought it, we said immediately that if this doubles, we're going to sell. And it doubled. And we were like, oh, what if it could go 3x? And then it goes 3x. And once we get to 3x, we're like, oh, damn, like this is, this is going to be the next blue chip. This is it. And then we're like, we're gonna, we, we will sell once it goes 5x. And then it goes 5x. Guess what you do when it hits 5x? Nothing. You double your profit target again. And it happens again and again and again and again. Because the further it goes, the more prone you are to, to your emotions. And your emotions will never do the logical thing. So make a plan while you're in a logical state of mind. Write it down and stick to it. And the last one's execute. I don't even know if I need to go over the word execute. I might even just Google the word execute and post the, uh, post the meaning in here. But just let your plan play out. There's, there's nothing that you need to do once your plan is set. That's it. You've got your plan. Play it. Does anybody, um, well, Martin, did you have any final words on that um, uh, before, we, before we start getting into some questions? Um, but I, I, what I will do is I actually created a checklist uh, the other day for um, a, a, a private um, person that I'm, that, I'm, that I'm working with, and I'm going to post it in here. Now, this revolves around um, crypto trading. But, it, but it, it also translates to NFTs. And what it is, is it's basically an example of what creating a plan means. And you guys can right click and save that just like you can any NFT. <laughs> and I really urge you to please use it. Please, please use it. It's going to save you an incredible, incredible amount. Floor is yours, Martin. Thank you for letting me ramble. <laughs> All good, guys. Hey, uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, I think that we've got most of what we needed to say for your community. Uh, one thing that's, was it, I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the channel again. Was, I was looking for the verify channel, but uh, Leela had a question. Was that her name? Was it? Uh, yeah, Leela Q uh, wrote, how do you find out the answer to number four? Is that the one you were talking about? Yeah. And the question number four was, is there a need or demand for the product service or service being provided? I mean, it's, it's a good question because there's not a set of metrics that, that I'm going off when we analyze this, but essentially you have to use your own brain, your own noggin and decide, is this something that you think people would want? Uh, and that is something surprisingly uh, hard to do, but, but, it's some, but if you don't personally have conviction that their product is important or that the service being provided, there's demand for it. If you don't believe in it, it's probably something that you should pass on because it's important when you get into a project that you are committed to it and you have the confidence and the conviction to be in it in the long term. Because as I said, there will be moments of doubt. There will be moments where things don't go as well as planned. And if you're not fully invested in what they're trying to do and you're on the fence about it those are the that that's when either a your your gut instinct was right and it's not a good venture because the product isn't what it should be or even if it is a good venture and it's just because you personally and your own values don't fi fi fully buy into it that you'll you'll bail or you'll be unhappy with the investment so it's something that you need to check off the box for yourself. Hope that it answers it as best as I could. Um, there's a there's a 
great question in here from DAI. And he wrote, these guys are awesome. Oh, sorry, that's not a question. Just self-promotion. I'm joking. You had me laughing out loud, but I'm on mute. <laughs> well placed, well placed. I was just, um, I was just going to say, is it if there's if there's is there any more questions? I hope that we haven't missed any. I I know that the chat has kind of been going crazy, which is good. Um, but if if anyone has any questions, um, I I wrote in the um the gathering channel uh, earlier after this uh, stage chat today, um, we we'll jump, which we'll be jumping off in a couple of minutes. Uh, I'm going to dedicate the next hour or so um, to this uh to the our planet discord so if anyone has any questions i'm going to hang around and and answer any questions you have even if you guys want to jump in the in the vc and and hang out and, and chat um you know I, i'm going to be open to, to all of that so whatever you guys need that's awesome tyler janelle if i can speak on behalf of this group. well number one this is not a quiet group in our event chats at any time um, I love the commentary. It's always uncomfortable when I think people are just sitting silently and not engaging. You want to make sure they're retaining something or challenging you, challenging you, just something. So we have a pretty fantastic group at our planet. So thank you for sticking around uh, for a little part of the day. A couple things for everybody. We will be in further talks with Alpha Traders Country Club on ways that they can benefit you as holders. So things like alert channels, things that are exclusive to our group uh, will be sending out a poll. Um, if this is interesting to you, we want to, you know, stress test this with all of you first. If we want more access to what Alpha Traders Country Club is doing as part of the Our Planet universe, uh, we will make that available to you. So final sites, if you want to go ahead and issue that and everyone can vote uh, yay or nay. Um, I, I think I can speak at least for most of the people in the sentiment I'm seeing in event chant. They, they found this helpful. I think so many good quotes that you guys are putting out there and we share a lot of the sentiment that you are echoing here and you know just to make us all well-rounded investors i think a lot of you know the advice and knowledge that you are imparting um, are going to help a lot of us and if not us it's going to help someone else that we know so um thank you so much for making the time uh for everybody here the po app is now available the key secret phrase is alpha traders with an s country club the most basic <laughs> password that i could have come up with i just parked it in the vent chat again alpha traders country club all lowercase so you do need to have the app i included a quick snapshot of where you put in the secret phase and you should be able to go and uh uh collect these there's one for every event that we have going on this week and we have a pretty stacked deck for you all so i hope people are tuning in. If you can't, please listen to the recordings and I'm doing my best with some of my POAP contacts to make sure that you can also collect one if you have to listen in a different time zone. So I'm um, Alpha Traders Country Club, all lowercase. Go download now. It's only available for about 30 minutes. They put short clocks on this. It's a POAP feature, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but uh, need, needs to happen. So again, huge thank you, um, Tyler. Uh, Jen Alpha, you guys are fabulous. Excited to feature you further at our planet. I know you've started some due diligence on us. Uh, we're, we're here for it. So looking for ways to do some more interesting things together um, go, going forward. Um, but yeah, thank you again for your time. Uh, tomorrow morning, we've got mint collectibles from Tiny Astros here for those that are still embarking in, you know, some free meta um, NFTs and others. They are a, an analysis tool. That is pretty handy. So that one is at 9 a.m. EST tomorrow morning for those that want to get a quick run through on just what tools and resources are available for you to analyze. You just heard that from Gen Alpha and just, you know, a lot of the tools that are available to most of us are kind of subpar, but there are some um, and some that should be utilized and learn how to properly use them to your benefit. And then at 1 p.m. EST, we have Zeneca. Uh, so he is an advisor to our planet um, helping us build out, you know, our, our plans as part of this Web3 ecosystem. But he'll be here to talk about his 30 days for NFTs and actually raffling off uh, to some attendees some passes to his master classes that he put, puts, uh, puts on that are actually paid for. So there is a cost to um, uh, benefiting from any of those. So we'll make that available and that's the schedule for tomorrow. Um, I will wrap up here, guys, and give everyone some time back. So Tyler, Janelle, we'll look for you in our Discord, keep some conversation going on what we learned and um, thank you again. Thank you so much. And we'll definitely be uh, in touch. Uh, we would love to to learn 
and do more uh, one-on-one calls with you so we can eventually bring you guys also onto our canopy shootout and uh, do some uh, do some investing. Perfect. Yeah, we, we've closed seed rounds, so I am not uh, opposed to the due diligence that I know is coming. So excited. For- Thank, Thank you, you very everybody. much, Ashley and Warren. I appreciate you guys so much, and uh, I look forward to it. Have a good one, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye. See you guys. Bye.